generation literally without answers. Um, as long as they're working and as long as they've got some money in their pocket, then things are fine. But when things start to go wrong, when pressure starts to build up, like I said, it just becomes something like a, uh, just literally like a kettle and it begins to boil. Now, this is not for everybody. Um, people, uh, there are good Christian uh, people people, uh, black people, Caribbean people, African people, who uh, who don't have these issues. They are, they've moved past it. They are, you know, mainly because God is their source. And if they are, if they are mistreated in some way, or if there's some prejudice or, or uh, racial prejudice happening against them, they know how to respond because they, they have the Christ in their life. So they can, they can pull from that Christ in their life, from the anointing in their life. They can pull uh, um, the strength that they need, and they can get over it. And, and God gives them the victory. You know, God gives them the victory just because uh, they are one in Christ. But if you don't have Christ, you, there's a problem. There, and and there's, there's, there's not some, there, that's not something you can, you can fix overnight. You can give them uh, books. You can tell them about it. But to be really honest with you, Howard, that is a problem that's going to be with us until we see all men turn to Christ. Something that comes to mind, again, it's very controversial in that sense that, you know, we don't want to uh, stir things up uh, to make things worse in any way. But, you know, when we analyze what the British government's, not just the, the present government, but you know, the, the Labour government as well, it, it's immigration policy. Mm -hmm. uh, could that be some way, in some way to blame for the, for the situation? Because, you know, it, England is a small island. Um, it's a small landmass, uh, and yet what we're doing is we're bringing, allowing more and more people to come in, and apart from there perhaps not being, you know, I say perhaps, that's a silly thing to say, but there's not enough jobs for those that are already here in the UK, um, and then we're also cra overcrowding them into areas that uh, are already, you know, just, you know, it's, it's like a tinderbox you were saying, and you're putting more and more people in this same uh, area that's overflowing already um uh, is is a what what's your thoughts on on the yeah. immigration policy for example well i, I you know i again howard I, I i look if we look at it you know kind of holistically the, the whole thing uh, whether whether it was uh, whether it was an ethnic issue or not um yes it, it could well be but 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 the, certainly the issue that i see uh, and and I, I've been talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. But I and I particularly when I come to London, I do get this feeling that London is just like a. It's supposed to be a melting pot. You know that that was, I think one of those songs back in the 70s. Yeah. Great, but is it a cooking pot? pot? This is but, my point. I mean, has it become such a melting pot that it's now everybody's being cooked slowly? And uh, it's like the you know the frog or the lobster that's in the pot. It doesn't realise just how much it's been. Uh, it's set to boiling point. Absolutely, uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that is literally what is happening. And I think it's not just the yes, it's the immigration policies. But yeah, you know what? It's also, it's also, you know, uh, uh, I think, you know, and I, you know, I, you know, I, 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 let's Go just on, shoot. say it. <laughs> It, it, it's the Politics. Government, government policies. It's mm -hmm. it's the previous government policy policies as well. It's it's but but currently all, all I'm seeing and I you know the feeling that I get when you talk to people on the street. That's a, the the problem is that that most people in government don't appear to be people on the street. They appear mm -hmm. to be people who I don't know. They just uh, <laughs> if I'm being frank, they're kind of living in cuckoo land. They just don't. They're not. They're not in touch with reality. When you talk to people on the street and you, and, you, and you you get the sense that you know people who are working for instance and you know they can just barely afford to put petrol in their car you know to, to get to work there's no disposable income holiday what's that it's a thing of the past mm. you know um, th there is pressure when, when you live in a society like that um, you look at the pricing look at the, the quality of the goods that we're getting in, in stores I mean what is happening you know this is supposed to be the United Kingdom England but there's something seriously going wrong and when that begins to happen that causes pressure and pressure like I said uh, you know, it, it builds up and it builds up like a kettle about to boil, and when it pops, it pops. Unfortunately, last night it popped, and it popped within a particular community, but that could have easily, Howard, been another community. It could yeah. have been a Polish community. It could have been the Muslim community. It could have been any community. Any community that's under pressure will pop, and mm. they will look for 
um, excuses for, uh, you know, uh, what we saw. You know, people running out of stores with, you know, on camera. I mean, ridiculously. You can it's see like they couldn't care like, less, you know. They couldn't care less attitude. They're just running out of the stores with a couple of, I mean, I saw a ridiculous one. A guy running out with a couple of pairs of, um, of, of, of Nike trainers or something. I was like, give me a break, man. Yeah. You know. But he just well, didn't well, I saw one with a whole cart full. I mean, but the thing is, apparently they were posing for pictures to be taken with the goods that they've got. I mean, uh, and putting it on their Facebooks, apparently. So uh, the thing is that they, it's almost like they feel that they're entitled to these because they've been uh, marginalized or they're, they're being put down. They can't, they can't earn the living that they, they rightly want to, to work for a living. But, you know, the other thing is when you get uh, at the other end of the scale, you've got the, the very, very wealthy who are losing or supposedly losing uh, millions on the stock market. You know, we saw that it was 160 billion wiped off uh, the world shares yeah. uh, last week. But, mm. you know, that what sort of difference is that going to make to the extremely wealthy and you've got countries going bust uh, you've got individuals going bust you've got people losing their homes you uh, as i say that these are sort of conditions where it reminds you a little bit of what happened in the french revolution Absolutely. Uh, you know and uh, the queen uh, says you know let them eat cake if there's no bread you know i mean how so far out of touch it's almost like our politicians and our people uh, at the top and leadership are not really seeing uh, just how people are feeling on the street. Now, when you talk to them, Hugh, um, mm. what are the sort of things that they're saying? Y you know, be honest, because that way we can see, you know, from, from black, white, that w what is it that they're, they're feeling? It's exactly what I've been saying all, all, all the evening. Uh, it's, the, it's the pressure. It's, it's financial pressure. Yes, it's, it's um, you know, um, job pressure in some cases, but it's just a sense of pressure all around. I mean, when I, uh, particularly when I come to London, I don't know what it is, but there's, you, you just kind of get the sense that, you know, e even when you're driving around London, pe you know, people want to, um, 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 road rage is it just seem, where I live is, you know, I live in, in Northamptonshire and it's a lot quieter out here. But when I drive down to London, you instantly feel the tension when you get yes. into London. I was, I was actually in East London and I, I, I drove, I just accidentally cut somebody off. And this guy put his head out the window, and I mean, I'm not talking about some soft words, Howard. This guy mm -hmm. threw some very, very vile language at me, and he was mm -hmm. in a very threatening manner. And I thought, what in the world did I yeah. do to deserve that, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you see this over and over again as I drive around, and I, I, you just get this sense. You, you drive into this, this pot. That's mm. just uh, they're just getting ready to, like I said, explode. And so the more you talk to people, the more you realize that you know you hear the common complaint, but what's coming back all the time is it's like I said, it's not something that's particularly against them. It's just that when the chips are down, then you know what, you know, then it becomes about you. But really, mm. it. But so people are ready to snap. That that that's the feeling you exactly. get. And interesting, yeah. when I was in London a couple of months ago, because uh, I'm out here in Spain. Um, that I, I, I sense the, 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 the sort of that tension in people, especially driving around. It's almost like you were afraid yes. to be on the road because somebody was re get really upset with you very, very quickly. Yes. Um, and we all make mistakes, and, and it's just like, well, sorry, mate, but it's like you know they want want they almost feel like you're going to bite your head off. I mean, literally take you tear you apart. Uh, whereas, you know, some people just throw their hands up and say, oh, well, yeah, sorry, mate, you know, okay, and, and drive on. But this, again, if you think about it, it's so unnatural uh, for, for mankind to live in huge, uh, you know, sort of a population in one area. Um, yeah. It's not God's way. Remember when, we, when we're reading the scriptures that when man started to build uh, this, the Tower of Babel, etc., and to, to build these huge cities like Nineveh and stuff like that, these were, uh, these were men that were trying to do their own thing, and it wasn't, isn't the way that God would have wanted, I believe, from the Scriptures. I don't know what your take is on that, but mm. it's a very unnatural way to live, you know, literally side by side, you know, jowl by cheek by cheek, jowl by jowl, uh, in 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 uh, living like that is uh, it's just asking for trouble.
Yeah, I think when you when you move away from it and you, and you come back and you go back and you go, when I come back we go back to London and we, we look at kind of where we used to live and you think wow you know how did we ever live like this I mean it, it almost if everything's okay and, and things are rosy like back in the 80s everybody's making money that, big deal you know street parties it's wonderful but as you say uh, when things get rough obviously the going gets tough uh, then it's a different thing out there you know all of a sudden the person who was your player uh, becomes is someone who's a real enemy to you and that's something I've seen happen where somebody literally lives, lives across the road all of a sudden something goes wrong in the community or whatever and all of a sudden they are your enemy it's just not pleasant because they're right literally on your doorway uh, and, and you know Howard you said something about the you, t you talked about the, the the more international aspect and you know I, I, I have something to say on that I, I believe that um, you know, countries going bankrupt. We've seen Iceland, we've seen what's happening in America right now. And when we look at these countries like America, we think, well, my goodness, I mean, if, 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 if it can happen to them, it can happen to everyone. It's actually, for me, it's the same, the same answer, the same answer uh, that, that we uh, need is the same answer that, that countries need, whether it's a country or whether it's an individual. God said, if my people who are called by my name, they, they would humble themselves and pray uh, and, and, uh, and uh, uh, repent of their wicked ways. Uh, he said, I will hear from heaven. And he said, I will heal their land, specifically speaking to their land. And, uh, you know, I believe there's a solution for everything that's going on. And if we look back, over the years, we've seen uh, God being taken out of, of, of government, God being taken out of schools, God being taken out of our structures, God being taken out of everything. Mm, God is, is go. a place in the government. And then here we, ha here we have now a worldwide recession. Why? Because countries don't trust each other anymore. Because banks don't trust each other anymore. When, when these banking systems were established, the founding principles were, were Christian principles, uh, which meant that people would trust each other they would trust each other and that's what's going on and it's trickled all the way down I mean it starts up the top and it's gone all the way down and that's what I think we're looking at Howard that's that's the pressure that this country is under because you know what we've put ourselves we're in the hands of a government that that should should uh, be able to make decisions but when they you see them doing things like trying to fix the thing by by uh, you know borrowing money from here and, and moving it over there robbing peter to pay paul uh, this kind of thing just doesn't work for a country it might work for you know a, a, a couple a couple who are saving for a holiday but it doesn't work for a country what works for a country is a country getting on its knees and saying god we got this thing wrong help us and and asking god to put back in the trust into this country mm. oh yeah, Hi. amen. Well said. Listen, I'm having problems with my emails. I'm just waiting for the email system to kick back in. So uh, please uh, bear with us. And, uh, it's live tonight, Sunday night. We are talking about what happened in last night in Tottenham in North London, uh, especially with the, the looting and the rioting and the, the criminal aspect of it. And people taking things that d they had no right to take and to burn and plunder and loot. Uh, and people's lives and uh, livelihoods and uh, places of uh, dwelling places which is uh, you know it's, it's should be a place of safety especially when you're talking children women and children who, who must have been so fearful last night you know and on all this looting that went on it's just absolutely no excuse for it whatsoever uh, and it's quite rightly it's being condemned uh, by one and all but what can we do about the element that wants to take advantage uh, of this, uh, of situations like this, and use uh, you know the hatred that is built up um, o over the periods of time, and and and, and people lashing out. Uh, there needs to be an. Church without walls, uh, that we do right now collectively together. Pray for the people, uh, uh, first of all, of Tottenham and. For, for Mark Duggan's uh, family. Lord, we just lift uh, the whole situation up to you. You know everything. You know all the scheming that people do in their minds. And it says that you uh, find it an abomination for those who lie in wait and scheme uh, to cause damage, to cause hurt, to cause loss of life. And uh, Father, we just ask that uh, a, s a spirit of justice and truth will prevail where anything that uh, was um, perhaps a miscarriage of, of justice, even though justice hadn't been seen to be done yet, that there will be 
a thorough investigation that, and uh, uh, no cover-up. And Father, we know that uh, we live in a difficult, critical time in history that uh, Jesus spoke about where there would be uh, an increase in lawlessness and that because of that, the people's love for one another would cool off. There would be, uh, the, the, through their being intimidated or fearful,